Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Byram and I'm the Registered Dietitian and Health Promotions Manager with the Canadian Celiac Association. Today I would like to discuss with you the relationship between parts per million and milligrams of gluten in food and how these measurements are linked with gluten threshold levels. As a dietitian, I've been asked many times, what does 20 parts per million mean? It is not well understood what 20 parts per million means in terms of food. Think of parts per million as a proportion. Example, how many parts out of 1 million parts is the contaminant? Parts per million is also the same as milligrams per kilogram. So when we talk about gluten, we're looking at how many milligrams of gluten is in 1 kilogram of food. Hence, the number of parts in 1 million parts of food. Shelley Case, registered dietitian and author of the book Gluten-Free The Definitive Resource Guide, states that to understand how small 20 parts per million is, think of 20 pennies in $10,000. Celiac disease is a lifelong disorder affecting approximately 1% of the general population worldwide. Currently the only treatment for celiac disease is a gluten-free diet. Here in Canada, in order for a packaged food to carry a gluten-free claim, both Health Canada and the Canadian Food Inspection Agency requires companies to follow good manufacturing practices, or GMP for short, and not exceed 20 parts per million of gluten as a result of ingredients or cross-contamination. Of course, companies aim for no detectable gluten at all when making their products. When a company carries a gluten-free claim, it is understood that this food does not pose a health risk for individuals with celiac disease. Here are some examples of what a gluten-free claim may look like. Of note, the Canadian Celiac Association's Gluten-Free Certification Program, or GFCP for short, is the only Canadian voluntary certification program designed for manufacturers of gluten-free foods. This program is intended to differentiate products from the increasing clutter of gluten-free claims in today's marketplace by using the trusted mark of the Canadian Celiac Association. This approach, combined with analytical testing procedures for incoming ingredients as well as in-process and finished products, the GFCP provides added assurance that the products carrying this mark are both safe and gluten-free. So now that we have discussed what the 20 parts per million gluten threshold is for foods labeled gluten-free, how does this translate into milligrams of gluten in the amount of food products consumed and what does this mean for people with celiac disease? Even the best gluten-free diet is rarely 100% gluten-free. On average, a person consuming a gluten-free diet may inadvertently consume various levels of gluten. How much gluten is harmful to someone with celiac disease? There are several studies that have been done to look at safe gluten threshold levels. A study conducted in 2007 by Dr. Katassi and colleagues from Italy assessed the effects of consuming capsules containing zero, 10, and 50 milligrams of gluten on people with celiac disease who were noted to be following a strict gluten-free diet for two years. Results from this study showed that those in the 50 milligram group had considerable damage in the architecture of the small intestine compared to the other groups. In comparison, no notable change in villi was observed in the group taking 10 or zero milligrams daily. These findings suggest that it is reasonable to assume that a daily intake of 10 milligrams of gluten or less would be enough to avoid illness and long-term complication from mucosal damage. So let's look at parts per million and the amount of food eaten and how this translates into 10 milligrams of gluten per day. In this chart, you can see the varying amounts of food consumed at different parts per million levels and the level of gluten in milligrams that would be ingested. For example, if a food had exactly 20 parts per million, which is equivalent to 2 milligrams of gluten in 100 grams of food, you can see how many grams of a food you would need to consume to reach the 10 milligrams per day threshold. In this example, you would have to eat 500 grams of various foods at the 20 parts per million gluten level in order to reach 10 milligrams. Remember that 20 parts per million is a max level and most manufacturers aim for no detectable gluten in their foods. The question remains, if I consume more food despite choosing only gluten-free items, could I exceed the suggested 10 milligram limit? Well, in surveys that have been conducted for food labeled as gluten-free available for sale in Canada, evidence tells us that it would be very unlikely to reach the 10 milligram threshold. However, it can be done. 
Here is what 10 milligrams of gluten actually looks like, courtesy of the gluten-free watchdog. As a comparison, here is a photo of a regular slice of white bread, which contains approximately 3,515 milligrams of gluten. Now let's take a closer look at this question, as it depends on what foods you're choosing. The CCA recommends choosing labeled gluten-free foods for some items that are considered higher risk. Naturally gluten-free grains such as buckwheat, millet, oats, quinoa and sorghum, pulses like dried beans, peas and lentils, and flours made from these grains and pulses may have been in contact with wheat, rye, or barley during seeding, harvest, storage, transportation, processing or packaging. This means that they are high risk for being contaminated with gluten and would not be safe for individuals with celiac disease. Check out our labeling guide for more information. You can find our labeling guide on our website at www.celiac.ca. So what if we do choose some higher risk foods? Well, it would be much easier to reach that 10 milligram limit for daily gluten exposure. So what if we did choose some higher risk food items? Well, it would be much easier to reach the 10 milligram limit for daily gluten exposure. Take this empty glass as an example. You start your day empty with no gluten exposure because you've not had anything to eat yet. Some days your glass will remain empty for a very long time as very little gluten will be added due to eating gluten-free labeled foods, naturally gluten-free foods that are very low risk. However, if you choose to eat higher risk food items, you run the risk of gluten gluten exposure and therefore adding water into your glass. If an empty glass equals zero milligrams and a full glass is our 10 milligram limit, you can imagine that if you eat higher risk foods throughout the day, you get closer and closer to your 10 milligram limit. We don't want to breach that threshold. We need to remember that when we choose our foods, we need to think of it in a cumulative total. It is not necessary to limit yourself to only foods labeled gluten-free. Just ensure that you are following our labeling guide for recommendations. Thanks everyone for joining me today. Understanding parts per million and milligrams is a difficult concept, but understanding it brings us one step closer to mastering the gluten-free diet. Thanks everyone. If you have any questions, as always, contact us at info at celiac.ca or check out our website at www.celiac.ca. Thanks so much. Have a great day.